In this video, I'm going to show you how to solve quadratic inequalities in one variable. Now, these are actually very similar to linear inequalities in one variable. So let me give you an example. So let's say we have x plus 3 greater or equal to 0. I'm going to isolate my x. So I have greater, x is greater or equal to negative 3. So this is a symbolic solution. And if I wanted to graph this, we would plot negative 3. This would be a closed dot because it's equal to, and then it says x is greater, so I would draw an arrow pointing to my right, and that would be the solution. Now the only difference is, instead of the x value just having one value, when we solve a quadratic inequality, remember we often have two values. So we're going to take a look at what to do when it's a quadratic. Now these are samples of quadratic inequalities. Notice they are all have an x squared. And it can be less than or greater or equal to as well. Um, a, B, and C are real numbers, and A does not equal zero. Because if it does equal zero, we would actually have a line. All right. So you can solve quadratic inequalities uh, graphically, uh, just like we did in the investigation last day. Or we can do this algebraically, which I'm going to show you today. So the solution set to a quadratic inequality in one variable can have no values. It can have one value or it can have an infinite number of values. And I'm going to show you um, how this could be. <coughs> Excuse me. So to um, solve the quadratic inequality, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to solve the related equation, ignoring the fact that there is an inequality sign. And we're going to do this to find our roots. Next, we're going to plot the roots on a number line. And if the inequality is less than or greater than, we're going to use an open circle, just like what we did before. Since these values are not solutions to the inequality, but if it's less than or equal to, or greater or equal to, we're going to use a closed circle. Since these values are solutions to the inequality. Now the roots will most likely divide the number line into three intervals. It might not happen all the time, but it often does. And then we're going to use test points to determine the intervals that satisfy the inequality, which means that it makes the inequality true. And then the solution is the interval that satisfies the inequality. All right, so these are a lot of steps. <coughs> so let me go through them again. So the first step is to find the roots. So let's solve this question here. Um, we're going to pretend that this is an equal sign, so I want to factor. Oops. And so we get x plus 4 and x minus 2, and this equals 0. And so x is equal to negative 4 and 2. So we're going to plot these roots on a number line. So I'm actually going to place it right above my table here perfectly so that this isn't negative 4 and this is at 2, right where these cross here. All right, so because this is greater or equal to, I'm going to put a closed circle, okay? And what I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you how to do this and set it up in a table, and then we're gonna take away the table after, okay? So the roots divide my number line into three parts, as you can see, just like what we saw last day in our investigation. So my three intervals are x is less than negative four, or equal to, negative 4 is less than or equal to x, less than or equal to 2, and my last interval is x is greater or equal to 2. Now I want to pick a test point um, to see if it's going to satisfy the inequality. So a number that's less than negative 4 is going to be negative 5, a number between negative 4 and 2, I'm going to choose 0, a number bigger than 2, I'm going to choose 3. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take these three numbers and I'm going to substitute it into my original question here. Then I'm going to check to see if it's true or false. So I have negative 5 squared plus 2 times negative 5 minus 8. So I get 25 minus 10 minus 8, which is going to be 7. Is 7 greater or equal to 0? In this case, it is true. <coughs> Excuse me. 
Let's plug in 0. So 0 plus 0 minus 8, negative 8. Is that greater than 0? No, that's not true. That's false. And finally put in 3. So we get 3 squared plus 2 times 3 minus 8. So 9 plus 6 minus 8, and that gives me 7. Is that greater than 0? Yes, that is true. So based on my testing points, I can see that it's true when x is less than or equal to negative 4, and also when x is greater or equal to 2. So my two solutions, therefore, are x is less than or equal to negative 4, and x is greater or equal to 2. Now let's review how to do this graphically, okay? So I would take my x squared plus 2x minus 8, and I have to complete the square. So this will be 2x. So I'm going to half 2, which is 1. I'm going to square 1, which is 1. So I'm going to add 1 and subtract 1, and that will complete my square. So this is what I want to call my function. Okay, so let's factor the first three terms, and this gives me x plus 1, all squared, and then minus 1 minus 8 is negative 9. So I'm going to graph uh, my vertex at negative 1 and negative 9, and then because I don't have any um, stretches or expansions or compressions, because there's no a value in the front, I know that I can just use 1, 1 on either side, and then 2 and 4 on either side, and then 3, and then 9. So I'm going to connect my 7 points in a nice looking parabola. And let's go back to what it said. So it says, where is my solution, what x values will make my graph, my y value, bigger or equal to zero. And so for my graph, I can see that this is where it's bigger or equal to zero on the ends of the graph, which means that this part here and this part here is where my solution is. So those are the ends. X is less than or equal to negative four and X is greater or equal to two. All right, let's take a look at another example, but this time we'll take away the chart so we can show um, so we don't have, I can show you what uh, you do need to show in your work. <coughs> okay, so first thing I need to find my roots. So I need to do some factoring. So I'm going to factor out my negative first. I don't like to have a negative in front of the x. So I have x squared minus 6x plus 8, and I'm going to set that equal to 0. And I'm going to factor this, and this factors to be x minus 4 and x minus 2 equal to 0. So my two roots are 4 and 2. So I'm going to plot them on a number line. Now, instead of doing the whole table, I'm just going to do a little shortcut. So I'm going to choose three test points. I'm going to choose 0 and 3 because it's between 2 and 4, and then 5 because it's bigger than 4. All right, so I just have to know if these values are positive or negative. I don't actually need to know what the exact number is. So when I plug in 0 into my original question, I can see I have 0, 0, so I have negative 8. So therefore, negative 8 um, is negative. So I'm going to put a little negative sign here. When I plug in the number 3, I can do that up here, but you know what? I actually see that it's actually easier to put it into my factored form, and I'll show you why. So when I put in 3, I get 3 minus 4, which is a negative number. So I'll put a little negative sign here to remind me. Oops. Uh, I put in 3 over here. 3 minus 2 is positive. So I have a positive number times a negative number times a negative number, which means this must be a positive value. Okay, let me show you one more time with the 5. So... I have um, the number 5. I'm going to plug it into my factored form. So 5 minus 4, that's a positive number. And then plug in 5. 5 minus 2, that's also a positive number. So now I have a negative times a positive and a positive, which means that my number 
will be negative since I have an odd number of negative signs. All right, so from here, I see I have a negative, positive, and negative. Now, which solutions do I want? So looking back, I can see I have a less than symbol. Less than means that we want less than zero, which means that we want negatives. So which solutions gave me negative values? From my number line, I can see that happen when x was less than 2 and also when x is greater than 4. Now let me graph this so that we can double check and I'm going to rewrite this as negative x squared plus 6x minus 8. So I'm going to factor the negative again. So I get x squared minus 6x and I want to complete the square and remember we leave the negative 8 on the outside that doesn't get the negative doesn't factor with that part and we take 6 we half 6 which is 3 we square 3 and we get 9 so we're going to add 9 and subtract 9 to complete the square and so I get x minus 3 when I factor oh sorry hold on I forgot a step so I get x squared minus 6x plus 9 and then I want to kick out that other negative 9 so negative times negative is positive 9 minus 8 and so now I'm going to factor this gives me x minus 3 all squared and then plus 1 all right so my vertex is 3 and 1 and again there's no expansion or stretch or any shifting oh sorry any um, expansion or compression <clears throat> so I can use the ratios 1 to 1 2 and 4 and then I can connect my five points okay so when I connect those five points <coughs> remember that I want the part that is negative and I can see from the graph this is where it's negative down here on the ends okay which means that the corresponding x values will be starting at 2 open circle because it's less than and then heading towards the left and starting at 4 and heading towards the right so the graphical solution if you wanted to put this on the number line would be open circles at 2 and 4 and we will be pointing to the left at 2 and pointing to the right at 4.